Exercise one, we're going to consider proportional reinsurance and try to think about how to choose the proportion to reinsure in such a way that the ruin probability will then be minimized. So before we start, let's just take a look at what we mean by proportional reinsurance and try to figure out what is the model that we are looking at in this exercise. So proportional reinsurance. Let's start where we typically start, which is having some insurance company which pays out claims to its customers. given that these customers also pay some premium to the insurance company. Now, in order to guard against large claims, which may lead to bankruptcy and ruin, uh, an insurance company can choose to buy a reinsurance contract from a reinsurance company. And basically, a reinsurance company is just an insurance company whose customers are insurance companies. So in this case, what we have is the insurance company pays some premium to the reinsurance company. And in return, the reinsurance company will reimburse part of the claim that the insurance company pays out to its customers. And the way this reimbursion is designed depends on which type of reinsurance we're considering. When we look at proportional reinsurance, the reinsurance company will reimburse a proportion A of the total claim that is paid out to the customer. So this is how proportional reinsurance looks. Proportional reinsurance. Now, just by considering this drawing, there are a few things that we may notice. Uh, first of all, we should require for the premium income of the insurance company to exceed the premium that it pays to the reinsurance company, uh, or at least that is kind of what we hope. And uh, also, it makes sense for this proportion A to be somewhere between zero and one. Okay, so now we read the exercise text. The first question we must ask ourselves whenever we read some kind of non-insurance related exercise text is, what is the model? And related to this question are actually two sub-questions. One is how do we model claim sizes? And two is how do we model the number of claims? So let's just try to figure that out first. When it comes to the claim sizes, we are told that the claim sizes yi are iid exponentially distributed with parameter theta. And here, yi is paid out by insurance company. And a proportion A of the claim size is covered by reinsurance. Yeah. And how do we model the number of claims? Well, the number of claims is modeled by N, which is a Poisson process with arrival rate lambda. And 
in the model, which for the part of the claims itself is a Krimer Lundberg model, we have that the yi are all independent of the claim number process as well. Okay, so we have the model for the claims themselves now. So uh, we only need a bit more in order to be able to write up an expression for the total capital. And that bit more that we need to consider is not just how we model claim sizes and how we model the number of claims, but also number three, how do we model the premiums? Do we model the premiums? Well, first of all, we know that the customer the customers pay the premium C given by 1 plus Xi, which is the loading factor that we are given in the exercise text, multiplied by the expected claims. And that is equal to 1 plus Xi multiplied by the expected number of claims, which is lambda, divided by theta, since one minus, uh, since one over theta is the expectation of the size of each claim. So we have what the customers pay, but we also need to figure out what the insurance company pays to the reinsurance company. And there, we know that we denote this by CR. And according to the exercise text, the, in, the reinsurance company loads its premium by XIR. And we are also given in the exercise text that we shall have to assume that XIR is greater than or equal to XI greater than zero, then the insurance company will pay one plus Xi R multiplied by the expected claims covered by reinsurance. In which case, we have that is given by 1 plus Xi R multiplied by lambda divided by theta, since 1 over theta is the expected size of each claim the customer comes with. However, the reinsurance company only covers the proportion A of the claim, and thus we have to uh, resize this by the proportion A. So now we have how we model the claim sizes, how do we model the number of claims, how do we model the premiums, and since we know all of this now, I guess we're ready to try and write up some expression for the total capital of the insurance company. So the total capital at time t is given by, we use the symbol ct. And first of all, we need to have some initial capital. And to that, we will have to add the premiums. And then we subtract the expected claims. Well, not just the expected claims, then we subtract the claims. And the premiums consist of C minus 
CR, which is the rate of premiums coming in and going out, multiplied by T, whereas the claims are given as, well, the insurance company pays out YI, right? And we count the number of claims up until N. However, a proportion A of these is covered by the reinsurance company. So that will be reimbursed. And therefore, when we write this entire thing up, we have that the total capital at time t is given by u for the initial capital plus c minus cr multiplied by t for the premiums minus the sum from 1 to n of 1 minus a multiplied by yi. And what we see now is that the total capital follows a kramer lundberg process where the premium is given by this C minus CR and the claim sizes are IID given by, let's just denote them Y tilde I, which is equal to one minus A YI. And each of these are exponentially distributed with parameter theta over one minus A. Since um, this is what happens when you scale an exponentially distributed variable. And therefore, in the later part of the exercises, we will be able to just work with the total uh, capital uh, using the results that we already know for a kramer lundberg process. There is one more thing that we need to consider now that we have figured out which model we are working with, and that is when the net profit condition is fulfilled. Because if we don't know when the net profit condition is fulfilled, essentially we don't know when our model is well defined. Uh, if the net profit condition isn't fulfilled, then it doesn't make any sense to do business. So that is what we will look at in the next video. And then after that, we can start solving the problem.